Welcome to the first 2021 edition of A Midweek Moment, a project begun back in March of 2020 as a way of staying connected during a time of disconnection, a time that I naively thought would last about six weeks, but here we are in January 2021, and the realities of life still have us keeping our distance but looking for ways to connect. Throughout the last year, I have used these moments to think with you about a biblical text or maybe a hymn that was formative for me, maybe even worth memorizing. As a new year dawns, though, I want to try something new inspired by one of my favorite writers and one of my most respected colleagues. The writer is Frederick Beekner, a Presbyterian pastor whose gift for language and his way with words has been an inspiration to me for a long time. And one of the books he wrote was entitled Whistling in the Dark, an, an ABC Theologized. And in the book, he took ordinary words, words that we use all the time, and looked at them through a biblical or theological lens. In a sense, this was a follow-up to a book he had written earlier, a book entitled Wishful Thinking, a Theological ABC, in which he took words that are clearly theological and tried to unpack them so that they would not just be churchy jargon, but words with deep meaning that connect us to our faith. But in his follow-up book, again, he takes ordinary, everyday words, and he suggests that they might just have an important theological dimension. And then I want to give credit to my good friend Alec Evans, who is pastor at Second Presbyterian Church in Richmond, Virginia, whose preaching for the last several years has centered on taking a single word and then teasing out of that word important observations about biblical faith and a life of faithfulness. As a part of his process, he invited church members to suggest words for him to consider. So between their suggestions and his own curiosity about some of the familiar words in the scriptures, he has a long list of words that have served to spark creative thought and reflection. So having, give it, having given credit to those inspirations, let's embark on 2021 with a look at some pretty ordinary words and see where they might take us as we think about them as words of faith. And it seems fitting in early January with a year stretched out before us to start with the word go. Right off the bat, I want us to move beyond the notion that faith is mostly about right doctrine, though right doctrine is important but that faith is a lived out, practiced discipline, a life of devotion to the way of Jesus, who, as we'll see, seemed to like to use the word go. In Matthew's gospel, for instance, in the last post-resurrection appearance, when Jesus wanted to get in one last words to his disciples, he said, go, go into the world and make disciples not sit upon this mountain and think deep thoughts, but go. Go into the world and make disciples, which is to draw others into this Jesus-following community of apprentices who learn what it is to live life to its fullest by following Jesus along his way. Go into the world and make disciples was Jesus telling us to be about the business of helping to draw others into this community of the redeemed and the redeeming. But this wasn't the first time Jesus used the word go to a person who knew there must be more to life than he was finding, even though to an outsider it sure looked like he had it made. Jesus said, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and come follow me. This was a jarring invitation to the person who had no idea that the life he wanted was so different than the life he had. He might have been hoping to make some minor adjustments, but Jesus said, go. Go from where you are to where following me will take you. Go turns out to be a little word with big consequences. And then to a person whose life story was checkered, as is ours, Jesus said, go and sin no more. And can't we agree that's easier said than done? 
But here I think Jesus was inviting this seeker to take their life in a different direction with different hopes and dreams. For if the Greek word for sin means missing the mark, might Jesus have been inviting her to stop missing the point of living? Might Jesus be saying the same to us, to stop settling for a lesser life when he came to offer a new life? And then after telling the story of a despised Samaritan who showed unexpected kindness to a person in need, Jesus said, go and do likewise, which again was jarring. Go, act like a Samaritan? That can't be right. But that Samaritan knew what it was to be a neighbor, not in theory, but in fact. And Jesus has been trying to tell us all along that loving God and loving neighbor is the life to which he calls us. And sometimes the people we look down on have that figured out better than we do. The Samaritan did. So Jesus said, go and do likewise. So it's obvious to me that Jesus has in mind to move us from where we are to where we might be, as again and again he draws on that little word, go. As a new year stretches out before us, I wonder where we'll be called to go. I wonder where Jesus will compel us to go. My best guess is that it will be in the direction of our neighbors and in the direction of a life of devotion to the God from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray. God of grace and goodness, we thank you for setting before us the life and the love, the example, the witness of Jesus, and for his compelling invitation to follow, to go. Give us the courage of faith to heed that invitation, to get up, to go where he leads, to go where he sends, that we might be faithful and effective witnesses to what you are doing in this world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. There's that word again. Go in peace. And as you go, as you make your way through the days and weeks and months ahead, I pray that you'll find peace in the confidence that as you go, God goes with you. Amen.